was six flights up into her room, left me panting by the time I turned the door handle. She kept a red trunk just at the bottom of her bed, not one of those silver-coloured ones with the brass-bolted ends that everybody coming from the island seemed to have for their return. Hers was bright and red manolian. It had a strange textured feel to it, not smooth, a bit like her. So many things packed tightly. I didn't know why there was a pressure cooker in there, but I believe she was under pressure. Pressure that you would never know, never even conceived. A him she, I heard people say, and laugh and turn away. In that trunk was razors to take the stubble from her chin and shave the hair between her cleavage. There was a flowered bedspread of candlewick pink Ten marina shorts and five boxer shorts, bought for Grandpa, now faded, now with age. Don't know when she packed this trunk, but she never travelled back home. I am trying to decide what I should keep, what I should let go. I come across two vinyls, O Island in the Sun, and lie down, yell, let me push it up, push it up, lie down. <laughs> Stepping back. Sitting down, I begin to cry because I see photographs of myself amongst her things. I know I was the daughter she couldn't have. Unexpected photographs stolen from my own album of my children, with grandchildren written underneath the, each image. I came across the passport, port, uh, passport photograph that told me. I came across the passport photograph he took when first travelling to England, his name at christening, his last family, his lost family. I found the papers with the name change from Morris to Maureen. Her identity from after that, the doctor said. He delivered me this news of cancer carelessly, as if she meant nothing to no one. There was everything in that red trunk at the bottom of the bed. It was a tumble of all of her yesterdays, promises of tomorrow that never came. Everything except her ticket home, Big Shirley.